Insomnia from UnrealTech.net here, Division of BlenderTech.com. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you the power of what some people called boring and a waste of time in previous episodes. That is putting in the time on the base class widget. Similarly to creating base classes in any programming language, which can be reused over and over to save time, we've done the exact same thing for GUIs with our base widgets. So open your project and remember, create your way. Anyone who's studied programming knows that ideally a new base class should be created so that it can be used in many different ways with no modification. We've done that here and throughout the series we'll see more of it, but today I figured we'll just recreate a few of the GUIs that we need that the multiplayer Steam project just doesn't work with anymore. The ones that um, were created in the very first episode. So, let's start with the character class selection screen to show off the power of base widgets. We are going to need two widgets for this, but let's create a new folder first. We're going to call this car class selection. What is a car class select? I'm going to set that to green because we're working on it. Now, let's right click and create a new user interface uh, widget blueprint. And let's call this um, widget uh, underscore car class select. And we're also gonna we're gonna make this even more editable by creating a second one, which is gonna be called. Um, I don't really want to call a widget base, but. Yeah, we'll just stick with uh, widget base or base widget. And this will be car class select. So we know that that way they are tied together. So if we open up our widget car class select, I'm just going to save while we're at it. Um, what we can do first of all is we can reparent. So file, reparent blueprint. And we want to um choose our base widget menu panel so um you'll see now that we have all of our um, variables from that parent class so now we can just simply add things that we want what title is this gonna have well it's gonna be character class uh we'll go selection we'll also go choice to keep it a little bit shorter choice all right and um we're gonna want to fake um if, if we can expand this here a little bit we're gonna want to fake focus force check on events other than that it is totally good to go from there so now all we need to do is quickly design it so we have our canvas panel and inside of it we're going to add a vertical box vertical box vertical box where are you there you are just like so let's set up some sizes um where are we custom um we're going to be using this in uh 3d widgets i'm hoping so let's go something like 2k 2048 by 1024 and so we want our vertical box. We want to have its anchors to all four corners since it's going to be used in uh, 3D widget sense. And let's set its offsets all to zero so it fills the entire thing. Inside of there, let's add a size box. That way we can adjust the size of um, the overlay that we're going to be adding inside of it. And let's add a height override of somewhere around 256 pixels. Ooh, it might be a little bit big. Let's go uh, 128, 1, 156, 178. Let's go with 178. We'll probably want to keep uh, 196, 128. I don't know. We'll want to keep a similar size between all of them, maybe 256. We'll start there and we'll see. We can always change it very easily later, hence the use of a size box. Um, and that is that. Now we can add our overlay right there inside of our size box. And 
and um, after that we want two images and a text block so let's add our two images and text block image 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 into our overlay so two images and then a text block whoops inside of the overlay so the first image is going to be our background it doesn't need to be a variable um, we want to fill the entire thing and we need a different color and opacity for our backgrounds are black because that gives us the ability to create dividers um, next up will be our foreground so we'll rename this foreground we'll set it to fill however we'll give it some padding on the bottoms uh, about 24 pixels maybe and we will set its color and opacity to that blue steel blue that we've been kind of going for and once we get to the polishing stage then we can make sure they're all using the same hex code and such so somewhere around there I'm thinking next up our um, our actual text block so all we have to do in this case is we want it to be vertically centered and we just have to bind it to um, first of all let's give it some uh, text this will be um, title goes here yeah that'll work and bind it to get title text uppercase uh, that comes from our parent class uh, let's change it from white to black so it's more visible and let's change its size much much larger I'm thinking somewhere in the uh, 72 range probably I might have created this header a little bit too big maybe we should go down to 128 that's a little small 26, 178, let's stick with 178 and then we will go back to here and yeah 72 will still fit perfectly fine in my opinion we want that to be centered so that way we go that's our title just like so now what we want to do is we want to add if we go down to all our created ones we want to add our um, base widget for this one so our base widget car class select we want to add that um, inside of the size box or sorry inside of the over or sorry inside of the vertical box rather and then we want to set it to fill like so now it doesn't have anything yet so we're not going to see anything but that will be changed very very soon so after that is in place um, then we can add another size box to our vertical box like so and that one we're gonna want smaller than the header bar because this we're gonna be our this we're gonna, this is where our return button is gonna be so um, we're gonna set it to fill and we want it to vertically align to the top so that way it'll um, work in any size um, and we want a height override of what do I think will look good probably 128 I'm gonna be a little big uh, 64 maybe a little small 78 it's 96 that looks pretty good and then we simply just want to add and this is um, the first show of how powerful these can be is we want to add our base widget buttons bar into this size box like so and so what we want to do is we want to add um, uh, an element to our buttons text and in here we're just gonna want a back button and that's it and so it will automatically generate a um, it will automatically generate a um, button for us. We do not, however, want um, focus to wrap around. 
And then what we want to do is, since it's only going to be one button, we just want to go to on button pressed. So when this button is pressed, what we want to do is we want to call from our parent class back focused widget. So this will bring us back to the screen we were at last. So we'll just uh, comment that uh, handles taking us taking us back to the previous screen. Uh, the previous yeah, I'll just say screen. Ah, uh, we'll say widget. Ah, uh, no screen. Go menu. How about when back button is pressed? I press E. Close enough. All right. So that is that. So let's compile and save that for now. And let's go into our car class select because that's what's actually going to fill in that widget. So inside of here, it'll be uh, very easy. It also needs to be reparented. There is a hotkey for this. Uh, I totally forget it though. Um, but we want to reparent it to the exact same one to our um, to our base widget menu menu panel. Then we want to uh, go to our uh, I don't even know what you call it, but our our root here, I guess, and. Um, <clears throat> All the stock settings should be fine the way they are, I believe. Yeah, and then we want to add a. Um, we want to get rid of our canvas panel, and we want to add a vertical box. We we have the canvas panel in our actual um, core one, but in inside of here, we're gonna want a vertical box to fill in that area. So we'll add a vertical box just like so and it'll be fine just the way it is and then we want to add and again this shows the power again we want to add um base widget where are you menu choices so we'll add one and this will be something um you could do something uh it's totally up to you but we will go something like um we'll leave the menu choice how it is but um, the button text we're gonna say um, character class and so that's what we'll replace button choice here obviously uh, let's add another one and let's um, open up the menu choices um, let's change the button text to class and let's give it some choices. So we're gonna have assault. We're gonna have medic. We're gonna have sniper. And we're gonna have demolition. Dem demolition. Perfect. All right. Compile and save. And if we go back here, you'll see now that that fills in the area. And all the procedural stuff will get uh, created when we actually um, view it. And we can do that very quickly in our empty level here, possibly. Let's see here, world settings, maybe not. Let's see, can I play this level? I cannot. Because of a game mode, let's see if we can get this to work. Yeah, that'll work. So let's just go into our level blueprint very quickly, just to test it out. So on event begin play, we will and this won't be functional yet um create widget since we're just testing and the class is going to be uh our character selection if i can find it there we are owning player is get player control get player controller return value add to viewport so it will be um, off size since I want to use these in a 3D widget way, but we will be able to see how those are all filled in. So as you can see, we have our assault, uh, medic, sniper, demolition, and it goes around. Now I did see an error where if we go back, it gives us blank. So that looks like we have a small bug we might have to fit. And um, we're probably going to want change NAN to blank or use a different button setup there but you can see that that doesn't um, doesn't um, 
allow us to change anything. We can probably uh, set that up actually so that if there is no um, if there is no options, then it will just get it'll set the arrows uh, visibility to non visible, and it will um, get rid of the text there too. And then we have our back button there if we had some somewhere to go back. So you can see how easily, and you can't see the title unfortunately, but um, you can see how easy that is to make a GUI setup very quickly. So um. In fact, I think it would, it would be easier if we just deleted that top one there. Um, we would just let's set this one in our uh, BW underscore car class select to car class um, underscore button. Or no, this is um, menu choices. Like so. Yeah, menu choices. However, the interesting part is I'm setting all these manually. Um, I would feel much better if they were totally procedural based on just a single variable. Again, we don't want to have to reset or change stuff all over if we add a character class or remove one. So let's go into our event graph and let's call um, event init panel. That comes from our parent class. And what we'll want to do is we'll want to right click and add call to parent function. So we'll want to call the parent logic and then we'll want to take our car class menu choice and we'll want to add focusable widget to focusable array that should go into the BPI. Yep. Blue to yellow. Ooh, let's add that in. And then after that, we can simply um, create a function to um, fill all those in. So let's create a function called something like uh, initialize or rather create um, class choices, class menu choice, class choice, whatever. That's fine, I'm sure. And we're going to want to have a integer input, which is going to be the uh, chosen class. I don't even know if I spelt that right. Anyways, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our car class menu choice and we're going to drag off of it and we're going to get choices. Where are we? Get menu choices and then we're going to clear that. Do an array clear. Let's see if we can fit this in here nicely. You guys all know by now that I am a sucker for cleanliness, I'm sure. I could probably save hours if I didn't, but I am a neat freak that way. All right, so after we clear it, we want to get game instance. Because remember, we set our classes up there. We want to cast. I've set it to automatically go to peer cast since we use them so often. If you've forgotten how to do that, you just right click and you choose um, convert to peer cast. So, as our game instance, we want to get defined, let's see, get defined classes. And then we want to do a for each loop on that array. Let's see if we can bring this back and keep it clean. Yeah, I like that, like so. And I want to straighten that out. That's going to give me issues. Perfect. All right, cool. So in our body, um, what we need to do, and I guess I can do it now. Um, after it's completed, we're going to want to create a reroute. Let's see, should we go up or down? It would make more sense to go down. So we'll just do that. We'll create a reroute and um, create another one. And then we, what we want to do is we want to set choice selected. Set, come on set oh sorry I totally went off the wrong one here duh 
that should be off of car class menu choice. In fact, to keep it clean, I am just going to drag out another one. And then we want to set select set choice selected. When completed, and that choice is the chosen class. So let's uh, let's rewrote that so it's nice and clean. Something like so, maybe. Good enough. We could even go up if we wanted, really. We could do something like so. Good enough. Anyway, so what we want to do is very easy. We just want to take our array element. We want to break it. And that gives us all our information here. As you well know, we just need the names. I made that a string. I should have made that text. Um, so what we're going to want to do is now it's a good thing I created this extra one. So let's create a rewrote. I hate when things aren't straight. Good thing for that hotkey. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to um, get choices again. So we get our menu choices. And off of that array, we do an array add. And that comes from the loop body. Whoops. Maybe I should have left this one down. Let's leave that like that for now. It'll give us some more room to work with. And what do we want to add? We just simply want to add the class name. So assuming we've defined all those, which if we quickly go to our blueprints and our game instance, uh, our define configuration, define classes, default values, four elements, assault, sniper, medic, demolition, perfect. So that'll fill all those in. So that's totally procedural. So basically, um, now all we have to do is, um, well, what we, what we can do rather is get rid of those. We can delete them. We don't want our stock one again. All right, we can compile and save. Go back to our graph. So now that we've created that function, we can call it. So create class choices like, whoops, like so. So now all we have to do to add a new class and have it selectable is add a new one in our game instance class. And since we're going to have things listening for this when we change a class, let's create an event dispatcher which is going to be called um, on car class um, we'll say changed and we will give it an integer input which will be um, new car class so it should have been capitalized but I don't think I can fix that now no so um, what we want to do is we want to call that and all we want to do to call that or what we want to put into that sorry is our actually I'm going to bring this down and just create a rewrote straighten these out because that bugs me and then we want to get choice selected and you can guess where that goes in, just like so. So then um, if we have, say, a, I don't know, whatever might be needing to change when we, when the player chooses a new class, then that's, um, then it's notified through there. So we can compile and save. Oh, what do we got here? Why are you being a bugger? I believe just a refresh node will fix it. So that's what I've done and compile and there we go. Good to go. Perfect. 
Now I'm going to make ourselves a little uh, note here. I'm just going to comment that uh, to do future polish um, if we want if we want a preview of our class i.e. a spinning turntable preview of our class character um, we need to um, use our event dispatcher and a save game here just a little note if we ever want to make like a turntable of our character at a later date but that'll come when it comes to polish so I'm gonna compile and save that and we can go back to our main class and in our designer if we select our BW uh, car class select which I should actually probably rename to uh, car class select menu choice uh, if you scroll down you'll see we have um, our event dispatcher and events so we want on car class change let's hit the plus button and for that all we want to do is take the new car class and we will want a similar event dispatcher in here so on car class changed and that will again have an integer input called car class selected and so we want to call that and just connect we want to redo a refresh again or try a compile and refresh connect those up and that is that so um, this handles forwarding Let's just go keep it short forwarding uh, class selection changes um, to be uh, handled by other classes and then we want a, another one um, if we take the exact same one we see that we also have on nav wants to leave this so if that is um, if that is happening then what we want to do I have none of these lined up oh yeah I did should be there all right perfect um what we want to do is we'll want to a set false set widget is false focused nope that's the wrong one set this is the one I always mix up set widget for fake focusing I need to change fake to false I didn't use the same terms and uh, the options index will be one just like so so what this does is um, when uh, navigation um, exits the car class screen um, we need to focus only on the back button or the exit button or whatever we called it I can't even remember now so that is a that I believe for that for that we have our on button pressed um, we should call that button bar like back uh, let's call this uh, button bar underscore back all right, compile, save, and if we want to preview this one more time, we could probably go something like 124 by 800, maybe. Let's compile and save, and compile this. Let's save everything. Actually, we don't want to save that level. We might be able to see this all now. No. Um, probably the height that's getting it, eh? Let's try that so like 456 compile save play it's not liking us today for some reason I would assume that would be the um, canvas panels pivot I would think if we went zero and zero I'm not gonna waste too much time on this though you guys can obviously see that that's working 
if it needs to be. Um, we obviously have a lot more logic to build, but you can sort of see how easy it is to set up an entire functional uh, GUI that way. So let's just set that back to our 2K by 1K. Compile and save. Um, since I want to and we are going to thusly um, be um, using all of this in a 3D way, we might as well create the blueprint we need for this. So let's uh, right click new blueprint class of type actor and let's call this um, BP underscore car class select. So this will be what actually holds um, our 3D widgets. So let's add a, where are you? Let's add a widget, which we will call car class select menu like so compile and save let's go into its options um everything should be fine for now we'll probably have to play with the rotation and sizing later but that's fine um we'll get there when we get there um the widget class is obviously going to be our car class select Ooh, and that's well, that's why we're gonna have to play with the sizing. Um, the draw size. What did we go? Two thousand twenty-four by one thousand twenty-four. Two thousand forty-eight. Sorry. Um, the pivot should be zero and zero. I don't know if they've changed that in four ten. That used to be the only way you could make it work and actually uh, selectable in world space max interaction distance we just want to max that out as much as we can yeah the highest value it'll take basically <laughs> um what else do we need to do let's try to think um background color we don't need anything the blend mode should be transparent so we don't have that ugly stuff going on um visible yes i think I think that should do it as far as I know. It's been a while since I've done 3D widgets. I think about 4.7, maybe 4.6 was the last time I actually seriously used them. So I thought it'd be good practice not only for me, but for you guys. So let's, uh, let's set this up. So let's go into our event graph. And so let's go on event begin play. What we want to do is um, we're going to want to bring in our whoops our car class select menu. We're going to want to get user widget object. So the actual widget. Then we're going to want to cast to. Um, where are you? Cast to widget underscore. Um, car class select. Let's line this up. Actually, let's just use our hotkey here. I love it. Let's bring that all back. Perfect. So on event begin play, we want to bind event. Whoops, bind event to on. What do we call it? On do, 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 do. we need this instead. Bind event to on back button press. There we are. So on event begin play that happens and the event that we're gonna do, let's go up here. We want a custom event. Which we'll call something like um on back button pressed since that's the event we're binding and all that is going to do is it's going to take a reference to um the previous menu which um 
for now it'll just be a main menu so let's go widget underscore main menu and let's just set this to user widget uh, for reference for now we're gonna have to change that in the future because we're gonna need an actual menu to go back to and let's make that editable so that we can actually do so um yeah and then again um this would be a good area so i'm just going to create a rewrote i'm just going to leave a to do note um this would be where we would do the turntable character um selection preview setup for changes to class so just a little polish note there and the on back button pressed event um we need a main menu to finish that so i'm going to leave another little to do note uh to do um finish on main menu done and yeah that is um pretty much all we're going to need to do we are going to need however um a function called take input control and every single one of these 3d widget setups are going to need one of these um so what we're going to want to do is get player controller take the return value we're going to cast to bp player controller we're going to convert it to an impair cast and we're going to need to rewrote that and we're also going to need our car class select menu and we're going to want to get user widget object again and we're going to want to cast to um in this case bw uh, menu panel so we can get access to it um, options and since our widget is uh, a subclass of that um, that will work perfectly fine and we'll want to take this and after we do that cast we'll want to uh, set false is that the right one nope we'll want to uh, widget let's see set Set widget is false focused. No. Set with. Come on, set. Set. Oh, maybe we didn't make that one yet. It's actually off the BP player controller. Um, set widget is false focused. No, we didn't create that function yet so we might as well create that because we're going to need it so let's go into our blueprints and knock that out quick so our bp player control i'm just going to save while we're at it um this one is actually not too bad so let's just create a new function it's going to be called um set false focus widget and it's going to have a simple input, which is going to be a user widget reference. So we can use any, any widget on it, or we can input any widget to it. So reference to a user widget, we'll call this um, false focus in. And what we need to do here is go into a branch the condition being is the widget in uh, equal to comparison double equal is it equal to our false focus widget here which looks like we'll need to do a conversion like so and um, if true we do nothing if false uh, we're going to need to go into a sequence and the first thing we're going to need to do so number zero is do an is valid check those aren't straight 
I need to find out how they pick which one goes up and which one goes down. Anyways, um, so we want to do an is valid check. And we want to check if our false folks widget is valid. We're going to need to rewrote this because we're going to need to reuse it. And if it is valid, then we simply set um set is false set is fake set focus set false focus widget nope that's the one I just created I need to go off of this one set oh now I'm just upset Turn off context sensitivity set uh, focus set false focused widget no set widget set widget four nope the other one <laughs> set widget false. is false focused that's the one I'm looking for okay so this plugs into the target because because they're different um, that's why they don't show up however that should not need a cast So what I'm going to do is go into my editor preferences. I'm going to turn off auto casting. Oh, you're just being, oh, I know why, because yeah, I got the wrong one still. Um, let me go into that BPI that couldn't. Maybe I forgot it entirely. Um, parents, BPI widget focus ball. Set widget is false focused. That's not what I. That is what I had, right? Set widget is false focused. not as a message set widget interface call okay now we're in business Whew. I hate when things go stupid like that and everything's false and we can delete this junk so that Goes there and then the second thing we do after we set it to be falsely focused is we go into a branch whoops wrong key and this branches condition is um, first of all an and boolean First of all, we want to do an is valid peer. And the is valid object that we want to check is the false focused in widget. So I'm going to go like so. I'm going to rewrote it so it's out of the way of our first check. So we want to check if it's valid. And we want to check if um, it implements an interface which is our VPI underscore widget focusable so if both those conditions are met then that branch would be true or false so what we need to do is we need to take it and we need to cast it to that interface so I am actually going to reroute it back up and, whoops. 
kind of looks like a train track and over and we want to uh, cast to BP oh come on cast to BPI I guess we'll turn off contact sensitive widget focusable and as that we're gonna want to if true and false, we're going to want to set a false focus, whoops, our variable here. If true, we're going to want to set it to that input widget. If false, we're going to want to set it to nothing. And if true, however, though, we want to set is focused, set is false focused interface call, I'll get it right this time. And we want to set it to new false focused. And connect those up and we are good to go there. So that's steps one and two. Um, and that's it actually. So yeah, that's the entire thing. So basically what this does in a nutshell is um, it takes the currently focused widget and unfocuses it and then sets focus onto the input user, user widget like so. So compile save save everything those errors are just because I accidentally deleted all the input so now in our uh, BP uh, car car select uh, car class select now we can um, call that function because we actually have it so we can set false what the heck did I even call that now set widget compile set widget there we go set false focused widget just needed a compile and the false focus in is this one right here then we take the player controller and we're gonna wanna go back since we're gonna be using 3d widgets we're gonna want to set view target set view target with blend that way we can smoothly interpolate between the um, the different menus in our layout. The new um, the new view target is going to be uh, a camera that we add to our scene. So let's create a new uh, a new variable which we're going to call camera, and this is going to be of type camera actor. And we want that to be editable like so and that just plugs into the new view target um, the blend time would be something like one second or so uh, the blend exponent zero that should be fine just like that actually uh, we have our target we have our new view target that should be good on its own so we can now compile and save. So the only things we'll need to add in the future here is um, just the, the main menu stuff um, to get it almost functional or functional. So uh, we'll do that in the next episode. So thanks again for watching from the team here at unrealtech.net, a division of blendertech.com. If you want to learn something, please like it, subscribe. As well, we take donations. We're on social media and the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why. So we'll see you next time. Remember, create your way.